Now let's zoom in to the Netherlands and try to find the area around Amsterdam. Google Maps comes with two main map types, satellite, which is the current view, and map, also called the default view, which you can easily switch to by clicking on this button. In the default map type, it's easier to see the roads and also more road signs like this one are displayed. Some elements are also easier to recognize, such as lakes, lagoons, rivers, and other water features, which are shown in blue. Forests, meadows, and sometimes farmlands are typically displayed in green, while populated areas usually appear in this cream color. Also, notice that when the natural landscape is dry, like steep or desert areas, it's usually shown in brown instead. Now, let's switch back to the satellite type. Click on More, and in this mode, we have the option to turn off labels, which isn't possible in the default map view. This is useful if you want to take screenshots of specific areas without any labels appearing on the map. Sometimes they are just annoying. Ah, and one more tip. If you are only using 2D view, it's best to turn off globe view as it uses more memory and may slow things down. Now, let's explore the map details options, which appear when we hover the pointer over this button. The first option here is terrain, which displays topographic features, including the elevation and contour lines. However, in this area we don't notice much difference, because most of the Netherlands is flat. Let's move west and find a more hilly region. This one, in Wales. As we zoom in, we can see the hills, the contour lines, and even some elevation markers, such as this one of 200 meters. Even when the image is not perfectly clear, these details help us understanding the landscape better. Now let's return to the Amsterdam area and switch to the traffic layer. This layer shows traffic conditions on roads that Google considers significant enough to include. Now, the level of detail depends on the zoom level. If I zoom out, only the major roads display traffic data. On the other hand, as I zoom in, I can see that more roads appear with traffic information. Then, Google uses color coding to indicate traffic flow. The lines in green color means the traffic is moving smoothly. Then yellow, it indicates moderate traffic with vehicles moving slower. And red indicates that there is a very slow moving traffic or even a complete stop. However, it doesn't always mean that there is a heavy congestion, as it can be caused by a long red traffic light or even roadworks. By default, the traffic shown on Google Maps is live, and Google gets this data from drivers using smartphones with the location services enabled, and then there can also be other sources, like traffic sensors and historical data. In case you want to check out the average traffic, you can switch this option to typical traffic and choose the day of the week and time that you want to check. Look that around 8 and 9 there are slower roads, because it's when people usually go to work. Then in the middle of the morning the traffic is more fluent. Let's continue. The next layer is transit. This displays public transport routes, such as subways, tram lines and buses. You can click on a station to see the available services, along with the data showing the peak times when the station is busiest. I'm going to close this window, but if you simply hover the pointer over the station name, you can still check the subway lines that stop at Postjesweg. Now let's check another station, this time a tram stop, which is indicated by this symbol. Finally, 
this is the symbol of a bus stop and for this type of transport you can see the bus lines that stop here however they are not shown on the map unlike the tram, subways or metro the next layer is this one, biking which is available in certain regions and countries here we can see the Amsterdam cycling network as the city is well known for being bike friendly now there are several types of cycleways the first one in dark green means separate trail usually built on pavements let's check this one in the street view and you can see the dedicated cycle path here in this side when the cycleway is in light green dedicated lanes it means there is a bike lane in the road itself here you can see them in both directions if the route is in dashed green these roads are bicycle friendly and although there is no separate path for cyclists they are typically quieter or at least prioritize cyclists finally we have also two extra layers wildfires and air quality the layer for the wildfire shows the ongoing fires let's zoom out hmm I can see one here in Sicily, Italy then notice that this layer also contains the traffic conditions which are very useful for checking road accessibility near fire affected areas for example when emergency services like ambulances or fire crews are planning routes or when residents need to avoid blocked roads Additionally, we can see sometimes the estimated fire area and when was the last time updated and keep in mind that the absence of fires does not mean they don't exist as some regions may not report data to Google yet Finally, the air quality it's about the quality levels of the air in countries that share this data with Google Poor air quality can be caused by pollution wildfires or even sandstorms in deserts